when it comes to any of these full moon rituals, it's all about experience. And it's all about you being open to receive. Because if you're not being open to receive, then it's not gonna it's not gonna work. You're just making the work harder for yourself. It's like when you're opening the door, you're letting somebody in. But if you keep the door closed, how are you gonna let that person in? Hey loves, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're all talking about how to complete your own full moon ritual as requested by another beautiful person on Instagram. So thank you for your request and your feedback. I love talking about full moon rituals and new moon rituals and just the moon cycle in general because me personally, I'm very attuned to the moon. I'm attuned to its energies and the waves and the ebbs and the flow. And so the one thing I've really learned about full moon rituals is that it can be anything that you want it to be. Um, when we experience a ritual and when we allow ourselves to go through a ritualistic process it's whatever it is that you feel called to do and it's all about your intention really to the root of it it's all about your intention and you know if you have a full moon coming up today or if you're watching this today when i release this video which is a full moon tonight then there are so many different ways to move through this energy with grace and compassion and excitement because this time of the year, well, this time of full moons, it's all about harvesting what we have put out there in the universe. And so when we come into this energy of full moon and expansion and growth, we really, if you choose to have this perspective, we really let ourselves flourish and blossom and bloom. Um, and when we let ourselves bloom, then there's so many different ways to express that energy and to just heighten that energy even more. So why is the full moon important? It is a time, like I said, where you harvest all the manifestations that you've put out there. Maybe you put manifestations out there during the new moon um, and really just take the time to reflect and look back at what you've created for yourself. And so when we step into this energy of full moon growth and expansion, there can be two ways that you can really celebrate this energy. One is you can do it by yourself or you can do it in community and in, in group consciousness and collective consciousness, or you can do it in both, which is what I personally love to do. And so in this video, we're also going to talk about ways that you can do a full moon ritual for yourself in solitude and also ways that you can do it in community and consciousness group consciousness um, because whatever you feel like doing for that full moon is all up to you you know what is best for your energy so i invite you to explore what feels good for you at that time when i first started my spiritual journey and my healing journey i was really 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 obsessed with crystal bathing and really allowing myself to put crystals on my windowsill and even outside under the moon so it can charge and really soak up that energy. Um, but as I evolved and grew in progress through my journey, I, I noticed that I didn't really feel like doing that anymore. And I moved into ways that involved more journaling or involved more movement or involved more energy work. And so some ways that you can do a full moon ritual for yourself is one, you can take your crystals, which have beautiful powers in itself, um, and have the moon enhance them through its energy. Or you can allow yourself to just sit with your crystals. You can do um, an intention prayer and intention ceremony and ritual with your crystals. Um, for me, I'm really connected to the earth too. So that's why I really resonated with crystals. And I still resonate with crystals. I mean, I got my crystals back here. Um, but again, it all depends on how you feel and where you are on your journey. Another way that I personally haven't done much of, but I know many of my beautiful friends have, is that they charge water outside and kind of similar with the crystals the water outside um, and the water you leave out under a full moon is getting charged by that full moon energy and the times that i have done it i've also done it with alkaline water which is personally what i drink um, because it helps alkalize the body and when i oh 
there goes my time lapse when i take that time to charge water and and sit with it and and put my intentions with it i do notice myself feeling a lot more energized and just more excited with life so that's another way that you can do a full moon ritual for yourself another thing that i love to do is that i love to journal and i specifically love to journal about what i'm grateful for for what i already have harvested and what i've manifested up until that point maybe it's from that new moon before this full moon or just maybe it's for the past month just whatever i feel like being grateful for that's what i journal about and when you journal about what you're grateful for it's just also allowing you to bring in more of your manifestations and what you're harvesting into this reality um into into this reality gosh i hope that made sense i kind of just channeled that i don't remember what i said <laughs> anyways that is one practice i love to do with myself and also i love to automatic journal and it goes hand in hand with um, channeling and how I like to channel and, and receive messages with how I can move forward in my life and what I can do to, to take my next steps after the full moon energy. And with automatic journaling, what you do is you take a pen, take a paper, take your journal, and you just write, right? And it's a stream of consciousness. Um, some say it's channeled messages, some say it's subconscious writing, and just really allowing yourself to write without stopping, without thought. This was one of the practices that I would do all the time when I first started my journey. And this is something that I still carry with me today that I do almost every day. And whenever I feel like just letting myself channel thoughts and, and messages into paper and, and putting that into this earth plane, this 3D plane. So those are the ways that I love to create full moon rituals. I also love to sometimes do a fire ritual where i write down what i want to put out there in the universe and what i want to manifest and then i go outside and i take the notes that i wrote on or the piece of paper that i wrote on and then i light it on fire and fire is a beautiful element and energy of rebirth um, associated with the phoenix i encourage you to play with charging water and doing a fire ritual and writing down because it's it's bringing all those elements in to your energy and when we go through a fire ritual it's also very empowering to to use that element of fire because it's such um it's such a powerful energy because fire can either destroy or it can transform and and create so when it comes to creating something for yourself or creating a full moon ritual for yourself see what feels good for you and if you have a full moon ritual that i didn't share that you would love to share i would love to hear what you do in the comments below but now let's talk about how i love to do full moon rituals in community and group consciousness number one thing number one thing that i absolutely love to do is to experience a sound bath. Most of the things that I do in group consciousness and collective consciousness that I receive, I also facilitate. I love to receive from other practitioners as much as I love to give. So sound, just in general, sound is such a powerful tool to help release and to let go. And when we release and let go, we allow ourselves to make space to bring in those harvests, what we're manifesting for ourselves and when it comes to sound it really gets deep into your body like our bodies are mainly water and there's a study that oh, i forgot the doctor but the doctor this is japanese scientist i'm not sure if he's a doctor the japanese scientist masao imoto ha just got it did this study where uh he had somebody talk nicely to crystals or to water and then talked horribly and the same with music like he played classical music and then he played some like really heavy music and how the snowflakes formed were different and the snowflakes where were really pretty they were formed because we were talking nicely to them or we were talking or sharing classical music with them but the ones that formed 
not symmetrically, were the snowflakes that turned because of talking not nicely <laughs> to them and like playing this really hard, harsh music. So when it comes to sound, music is such a powerful ancient tool to align, realign yourself and to recenter yourself and to shift and transform that stuck energy that is in our bodies because nobody's perfect. We all got issues in our tissues. That's what, that's what my Kundalini yoga teacher says. <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, sound, sound baths, a lot of sound baths have been done in my full moon journey. Like I've probably received at least 50 sound baths. So it's it's a powerful way to, to come together. And also um, I personally love plant medicine, um, specifically cacao, which is a beautiful heart opening plant sacrament, plant medicine. And um, cacao is essentially the purest raw form of the cacao bean. Um, and when we sit with cacao, I love to call mama cacao, um, we're really allowing ourselves to open up our heart and really taking that moment to be vulnerable with each other, especially if you're doing it in a group setting. And when we practice that vulnerability in that group setting, we are allowing for that deeper connection. And I, I mean, cacao is just a special place in my heart. Like I've sat with cacao every single day after my breakup um and also i've sat with beautiful facilitators um through new moon and full moons so i'm really grateful for this beautiful medicine another full moon ritual that i like to do in collective is just going to, to yoga classes and sometimes they have special yoga classes you know like with a specific intention so i've gotten to kundalini yoga classes specifically with intention for abundance or specifically with intention to open up the heart whatever it is like i said in the very beginning of this video whatever your intention is then go for it see what aligns with you see what feels good with you and see what feels like it's allowing you to take that next step forward another thing i like to do is go out and dance um However, however this looks like for you, you can either go do an ecstatic dance. I've been to a couple of those and honestly, I was very, very terrified of going to ecstatic dances for most of my life because I had that fear of judgment of how people would judge me if I dance. But really, in all honesty, it doesn't freaking matter. So if you feel called to let go of energy through movement, love to go dance, love to just let myself move my body in ways that I am not thinking about. Maybe it's ways that I never thought I would move, but exploring that avenue has been a really fun ritual for me on full moons. Lastly, tying it back to when I first started my spiritual journey, I would love to go to Reiki circles. <laughs> if you don't want to know what Reiki is, it is a Japanese healing modality. Japanese energy healing modality um, that channels universal consciousness, universal energy through the practitioner so that you can allow yourself to let go of any blockages and energetic um, imbalances. And I want to do another video about all about Reiki because I am a, a Reiki master. And so wanting to share this energy in a group setting and receiving this energy in a group setting was a really great way for me to start getting my foot into the door of energy healing too. I used to be extremely skeptical, like, oh my gosh, so skeptical. I went to my first Reiki circle in 2018 and I was like, did this even work? Like, I don't even know. <laughs> and, and the more I went, I could feel the energy more and I could feel relaxed and calm. And it's all about experience. And it's all about you being open to receive because if you're not being open to receive, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. You're just making the work harder for yourself. It's like when you're opening the door, you're letting somebody in. But if you keep the door closed, how are you going to let that person in? So when it comes to any of these full moon rituals, really letting yourself, one, set that intention to being open to explore what feels good to you. And three, practice 
doing rituals by yourself in solitude or in community or both. I hope this was a great list for you to start off your full moon ritual journey. If you already do full moon rituals, like I said, please let me know what you do. I would love to hear and just learn more about different ways that people do their rituals for their full moon. And if you are new and just starting, I would love to hear what idea or what way speaks out the most to you and what resonates the most for you. Um, I just want to also say thank you to all the beautiful tippers and supporters, likers, subscribers, to everyone who has helped on this journey so far. Each and every one of you is such a vital part of my journey and for us to help each other to create, <laughs> create together and to connect and to be of service for each other. So thank you again for being here. And if you enjoyed this and want to learn more about how to connect, create, and heal consciously, feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell button, and stay tuned for more videos because I'm excited to share more. I appreciate you, and until next time, bye loves. <laughs>